about last night podcast, you slippery little son of a bitch. You're in a hotel room, and well, I had it. I had it in a, <laughs> I had it in a sleeve thing that I was wearing as a face mask before, and then I was like, no, nah, I should. Wait, have the it hair out. was covering the face. Well, I took the face mask. It's just like a a wrap, you know. Yeah. And I pulled it up so that my hair was like in the wrap, and I looked kind of like, I don't know, like an '80s like cool like football player who like took off his helmet. You're like, oh, dude, that. By the yeah. way, if, if you don't play Brian Bosworth in the Brian Bosworth story, uh, are you a sports guy? Um, kind of. I You're mean, a wrestling a guy, right? Sports. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, it's like you've got such an, um, you know, very jealous of your look. You know, first of all, the bod. <laughs> the bod. I mean, dude, don't ever stop posting IG workout videos, dude. Yeah. I mean, I when Pornhub porn up just announced it. <laughs> Pornhub just announced that they're not going to keep giving free subscriptions through April. So I'm going to need to start turning to IG workouts. So don't Dude, stop well, providing. They're all yours. I'll send you. Some, <laughs> I just got on TikTok too. So I'm just going to start doing oh boy. like daily TikTok dance videos. You're late to the game, dude. The new one's already two, two weeks around the corner. What is, what's the new one? I don't know, dude. I just feel like every, I feel like that's, I hear that from people that, talk there's always someone that's talking and knocking the thing that's hot at the moment yeah and they're like dude tiktok dude wait it's fucking you know B bishu bishu's coming out it's a japanese <clears throat> app Ooh. where you can upload your dance like while you're doing it you're like you can do that with all of them no but like while you're dancing it's on people can see it you mean like live yeah dude yeah anyone can do that uh, oh but bishu 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 yeah. dude well yeah you should uh is this microphone working or am I talking through this one right here? That's the one. Yeah. This one. Yeah. It's not this one. No, that's, I don't, that just looks like a decorative. Wow. Nice that dude. One, this one's not working though. People still buy those, huh? Did you get that off logic.com? Oh fuck dude. So I had to record <laughs> a voiceover the other day. <clears throat> yeah. And, um, and I was recording it with that microphone and there was so much static. I was oh. like, oh God, what yeah. the fuck? Use what you got in your uh, in your cans right now. That's you're you're coming through nice and clean. Where are you right now? You're in are you back in Virginia? No, Charleston. Well, oh, so you went out there for gemstones. They shot for two days and then pushed us. But see, we're we drove out with the three dogs, dude. So we drove out with the three dogs across the country like we did last year. You were planning on being there because you for guys- Five shoot. months. Oh my God, dude. So yeah, why would you? So you so you went out to be stuck somewhere anyway. Yeah, so, why so would and you, we signed a fucking lease <clears throat> and- Can I be honest? Oh, okay. So you had, so they, they put you up first season, yeah? Yeah. And then you get, once you get to lay the land, you get probably- you're like, all right, cool. Maybe take some of that housing money and find something that's more to our liking. Yeah, exactly. Dope. So you're, so you had already had that. So yeah, why would you turn around and go back if you got your whole we life? Were, yeah, and we were exhausted, and it was like, I think I'd rather be on this fucking little island in the middle of nowhere than LA right now. Oh yeah, dude. Well, you made the right choice. I mean, I'm in Oregon, and uh, I was in Arizona with my girls' folks for a little bit, and that was nice just to be outside and they were also a couple beats behind the chaos. So everyone was kind of still walking into a subway, like, you know, touching the meats, you know, just a little uh, too much heavy eye contact at grocery stores. But now, yeah, now they're all about it. And I'm up in Oregon with my dad uh, for some family shit. And it's pretty tame here. They don't have as many cases, but they're also, it's a smaller town, but also people just aren't, uh, everything shut down. So there's the few things there were yeah. to do, you can't even do so. Yeah, and here, here they were pretty slow, dude, too, because uh, we could talk Corona all day long. But I know. Like, on, we left LA March the 2nd, okay. and like on our second or third day, my wife Annie read an article and was like, honey, 
every stop we make, we're buying Purell and san like sanitary wipes. And so we started and I was like, what the fuck is this article? And it was like Italy. And it was like, nobody's talking about these hospitals. Dude, she like took me, <laughs> she was like, honey, do you understand what's going on? I'm like, yeah, people are sick. And she's like, no, doctors are having to literally turn away people to die because they can't fucking treat them. And I was like, I didn't know, I didn't know it was that Yeah, crazy. also it's, you know, think about the amount of times people have tried to stir, stir the crazy soup. And and the yeah. uh, the the concern stew of like you hey you don't even know what's about to happen it's like nine out of ten times because I feel like fortunately like there's the things that are bad that happen happen unexpectedly and they're kind of like a one and done like a fucking school shooting is awful that shit happens and then it's you know it's something like this that really lingers that like builds up where there's anticipation almost like the release of a of a TV show you're like wait what's happening like trying to figure out and there's not all the info so it's like tough to even take it seriously when it's not especially when it's not on the uh, home turf but yeah what was your first um thing that you bought first thing you bought and then once you've gotten into quarantine what's the thing that you've added to your routine that you didn't do prior oh first thing i bought what did i buy i'm talking not like tp like the crazy like end of the world like babe i'm telling you right now like People are going to need lube, so let's get all of it, and we can sell it out of the back of our house uh, in Charleston. That's a good question. That's a good question. I think this is going to be so stupid. Like fucking ramen, dude. dude like that's a microwavable noodles. Just because it was like they're a gazillion calories, and you can buy them in, like, you can buy a shit ton of them. Hold on. You want to see them? Yeah. Oh my God. Okay. Please tell me you just have a wall dedicated to ramen. <laughs> Hold on, dude. For one, I'm not wearing any pants and I've got my, fucking finally my t shirt tucked into my underwear. <laughs> oh my God. Dude, you cleaned out the Sam's Club. Yaki well, Soba. I couldn't even find regular cup of noodle at that point. So I just had to get Yaki Soba. And then this was the only thing. <laughs> Find on Amazon. And wow. it's, uh, what's the uh, brand bulldog yep. hot chicken flavor ramen yep and it's extremely hot oh my god it's dude very hot and then i was super grateful i brought my resistance bands which i wasn't going to bring because usually we go to a specific gym but that's been like a saving grace that's your big so when did you start two-part question a lot of questions first of all Glad we're finally doing this. I know we tried in live many times. You got wait, super wait, wait. busy shooting a, TV shows. Then yeah, I, you had a second question, though. Oh, yeah. The, what was the second oh, thing? Thanks for keeping us on track. Yeah. Oh, the thing that you've added to your routine, and mm -hmm. I know it's not working out because you've been doing that from the get-go. What's the thing that you've added to that you just didn't do prior? And I'm talking like things that because, you know, the new normal, the not having a real schedule. So what did you add to kind of like – you know, make sure that there was um, some structure or maybe just more sanity. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so my wife and I have started doing a 20-minute dance class every day. What? <laughs> that's, why, that's why I'm in this stupid outfit because I just got back from a dog walk and I just took my pants off. And I was like, let's just get this dance class done. By the way, if that's not put into some sort of rap song, <laughs> Diddy, Lil Wayne, if you're listening, I just came back from a dog walk and took my pants off. I mean, it kind of, it rhymes enough for rap to where yeah, you're like, dude. pants off, dog walk. Yeah, dude, it's got like. <laughs> yeah, dude. Uh, all right, give, so you. Give that to Machine Gun Kelly. <laughs> yeah, let me just text him. Oh, wait, so uh, I'm sure you got so much space. The dogs probably love it out there, first of all. Oh. Dude, they're in heaven they're in heaven all dogs don't go to heaven they go to the charleston south carolina they go to sullivan's island fuck dude um not to be uh confused with um i was about to say gulliver's island but it's gulliver's travels Jesus. but there was there was a show called gullah gullah island dude tony for the dude you were in the groundlings dude look at you <laughs> yes anding this fucking there was zoo. a show called gullah gullah island <laughs> And I feel like they shot it here in Charleston or shot it like on Isle of Palms, which is right next door. Um, man, the audience is going to love our shit. <laughs> <chance. laughs> so Dude, so far, man, they, <laughs> they will. Breaking, 
They will. Fucking the fans are diehard. Down. They're diehard, man, and they've been asking for it. So, all right, with the, with the workout class, was this because you saw too many girls doing their own plyo jams or cardio bar things online, and you're like, dude, this is not just a solo adventure to be had by, by the gals of the internet. This is time for the yeah. couples to step up. Yeah, and so Adam got us – Adam got us addicted to Peloton last year. Right. Divine lives on that thing. Yeah. And like right before this started, right before we left LA, they had just started doing dance cardio classes on Peloton. And he was like, I want to do one of those dance classes. And I was like, I want to do one of those dance classes. But of course, like usual, we got delayed like a month and a half. Yeah. But now we're doing them every day just because we legit la- giggle the entire time from top to bottom oh my we're God. just laughing and sweating and making fun of outfits <laughs> and uh it's just it's very fun it's the best yeah yeah and it takes you know takes you know you can't be fucking serious and be trying to do a box step <laughs> yeah yeah uh well not with that attitude but can you can you find uh something are there more things to do um uh, with an online workout class than you thought? Like, have you, are you guys adding your own, like, you said it's mostly dance, yeah? Yeah, the whole thing's dance. So it's like a little warm up, and then they teach you moves throughout. And then you put those moves together to do like a finale routine. And like, sometimes they're so hard. So I just fucking go off <laughs> on my own and do my own bullshit. I was going to say, are you supposed to become a better dancer at the end? Like, is it like, and look, if you really dedicate to this program, you know, if Paul Abdul goes back on tour, we're going to submit your name. No, no. Uh-uh. The whole point is just to sweat a little bit and have okay. some fun. Okay, good. Um, have you always looked like this and sounded like this? Like, was eighth grade Tony, did you always have this fucking, which is probably why School of Rock was so, such a, uh, a no-brainer because of, of your look, your chops, and your, your tonal, the quality of your voice has got Jack Black vibes to it, right? I'm I, sure. Yeah, yeah. I've been getting that forever. People yeah, like, but was that, like was that uh, happening as a, as a, a funny youngster? Um, I always, uh, I mean, I kind of had, had long hair in high school, but that was, I think I went through like a phase my senior year and yeah. grew it out and grew it out. And it was like, cause uh, remember the Titans had just come out. Remember the, the quarterback and remember the Titans yeah. had great right hair. Yeah. Um, I feel like yeah. that's really the only reason why I did it. But my mom. <laughs> Everyone's my brother, like, dude, what a great movie. You're like, yeah, the hair department on that movie crushed it. <laughs> dude, whoever <laughs> styled the QB. He was, he was, he was, he became the backup. So like, Oh, that's true. Yeah, that's true. Um, but my uh, my brother was best. He got uh, the senior superlative best hair in high school. Whoa! So I was a legacy dude. I got best hair <laughs> four years later. Did you really? <laughs> yeah, I did. That's, I was legacy. That's so funny. <laughs> I'm just kidding. There's nobody there. Hey guys, comedian Adam right here. Hope you're enjoying this episode of the About Last Night podcast. Boy, I got to tell you, I've been feeling good lately. And the reason why? Koi CBD. That's right. Back in the game. Feeling like my best self. Look, Koi CBD is the best CBD company in the business. I don't care what you hear from other people, other comics. Koi CDB, CBD. See, I got so much BBD, CBD inside me. I ain't even fucking talking right. You know why? Because I slept well on the Koi CBD gummies. That's right. They've got everything from tinctures to bath bombs to gummies. Uh, they got a skincare line coming soon. They got hand sanitizer during these times. It's very important. So what you want to do, if you want to start feeling like your best self, you want to take some Koi CBD bombs, put them in the bath. Okay. What? Yeah, come on in. Jackson, I'm doing an ad for my podcast. Can you say hi? Hello. Say, I use CBD gummies. I use CBD gummies. From Koi. From Koi. Koi's the best. Koi's the best. It makes me feel good. It makes me feel good. I feel like my best self. I feel my best self. Look at these muscles. Look at these muscles. Kiss them. If you get Koi CBD right now, you go to KoiCBD.com, promo code about last night, and you get 20% off your first order. That's incredible. Bath bombs, tinctures, skincare, hand sanitizer, gummies. They've got everything. They're my favorite. It's who I use. So 
start using it for you too. I can't recommend these guys enough. They're homies and all this shit works. Jackson, say 20% off. 20% off. If you use the promo code about last night. If you use the promo code about last night. About last night. About last night. Show them those guns again. Kiss them. Mm. Enjoy the rest of the episode. Were you funny in um, high school, not elementary school in um, uh, um, Virginia, right? That's where you grew up? Yeah, yeah. So I was, I was tied, bro. I got senior superlatives as best hair and class clown. Nice. Not bad. But the, the yearbook girl took me aside one day and was like, look, we're trying to be, you know, more oh, equal this year. Yeah. We're not, we're not going to give two superlatives out to someone. So I picked best hair for you. And I was like, I would have liked to have had the choice. Yeah, I was just, you know? I thought this story was leading in the direction of which do you want? Exactly. And I didn't, and I didn't have the choice, but I had been told I had been voted class clown. And, well, and guess what? Both are believable. Now, this is what I want to know. Who got class clown and where the fuck is he or she? They didn't award it, dude. What? They didn't give it out at all. That's the one that everybody... Clown. It's like best hair, class clown, you know, uh, best ass, you know, sweetest, smi <laughs> sweetest, <laughs> sweetest smile, sweetest smile, best, uh, softest hands, uh, <laughs> kindest heart, you know, uh, kindest heart is for sure. Yeah. Um, my brother, my brother got two. My brother got best hair and he got best to take home to your parents. Oh, damn. Oh, my wife boy. got best Girls driver. Girls must be going crazy. Best yeah. driver? Yeah, my wife got best driver because, and she loves telling this story. I won't do it justice, but it's so funny what she tells it. She was so dirty in high school. Like, she would be like the DD that people would call from parties to come pick them up. Dude, no shame in that. I love your wife. Also, I mean, vet, yeah, that's, I mean, that's a very nerdy thing, but it's also like, hey, man, like, you look back, you probably have at least seven stories of like, oh, I saved their lives that night. Like, Probably. I truly, <laughs> I mean, the, right? uh, like, you know, there's got to be a handful of, of people that are indebted to, uh, to her. Um, How terrible was the one most likely to succeed? <laughs> dude, never lived up to it. <laughs> who, like, who, what, uh, how, what was that based off of? Most likely to succeed. Dude, I don't know. Yeah, see, that one was such a, a lot of them were like, we know this because it's happening in front of us. Best hair, Tony. Like, we can see it. It get makes it. sense. We get it. You know, um, he's got a fun. He does that. You know, it's fun yeah, to watch yeah, it wave in the wind. Play, yeah. <laughs> he's got fun <laughs> hair play. Um, but, yeah, most likely to succeed is it's just a – that's a gamble. That's a yearbook rolling the dice move. But also, they, uh, they're, they, they don't expect a fact check. <laughs> you know, so they're – Exactly. But it was also like – I don't even think they do superlatives anymore, which is fantastic because they're so dumb. They're such a popularity contest. I know. They're so douchey. Um, I was just reminiscing. Do you know the first time I think I met you? And maybe I'm totally wrong. Wow. Let's get into it. Was it. that an audition? Yeah. Was it an audition for Eastbound and Down? Wow. The yeah. last se this last season or season five to play the car salesman on East Mountain Down at Crossroads wow. of the World. Wow. Yes, it was. Wait. Yes. Did you audition the, for yes. the car salesman? Yes, it was, part? dude. You know what? I thought it was Ballers for some reason, but it wasn't. It was, I knew it was an HBO thing. It was East Mountain Down for sure. It might have been Ballers. No, well, it was. Regardless. It, it no, was you're East right. Mountain Down. You're exactly right. It was East Mountain Down, the car salesman. You got yeah. it, didn't you? Uh, no, I didn't. Oh. And I'm buddies with the guy that got it, but I just finished rewatching that show. And all of a sudden I had like a flashback. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Because I had been a fan of yours and I knew who you were. And I remember we had like a short talk in the, in the lobby because I was buds with Adam and I knew you guys were buds. Yep. And then was DeWalt and Glassman. We had oh my a, God. quite a few people in common, which is, it's always great when that does happen. That's happened to me maybe two or three times where I've got someone that I've same thing, dude, been, been watching you since the get go and, and just too many ties, you know, from groundlings and then just all your shows and people that when I meet, you know, you just get into this enough. <clears throat> and hopefully if you do your job on and offset of not being a piece of shit and being, being funny as fuck, then enough people just want to start going to you. And hopefully if you're in that same 
you know, uh, camp and they, they're like, oh, you, you probably know. And then you're like, no, but I know. And you're like the 50th person to ask me if I know Tony. So it's like, we've got so many threads, I think, that are, that are twined. Um, but, uh, but yeah, dude, you, uh, when I first truly you got on my radar was um, I tested for, it was the first thing I ever tested for. And it was um, a Ken Jong MTV show. Oh my God. The Ken Jong fucking how Ken Jong does Ken it. Ken Jong made me do it. Ken Jong made me do it. <laughs> and dude, it was like the first thing I tested for. So, you know, done a bunch of auditions part of that, but testing's a new beast. And I think Suzanne Daniels was running MTV and she was in the room and, 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 you know, Pete, uh, Pete uh, Siegel, Pete Siegel, who's now become a good homie was, was in there and made me real comfy. Cause he's just a man. Oh, and I remember going in a couple times and feeling real good. And then I think you had just gotten School of Rock, by the way, dude. I had just gotten it. Oh, yeah. So and, and saw that. I remember seeing that and being like, oh, and, and again, I've seen you from Groundlings and, and just videos and whatever and been like, oh, fuck. What a, and I remember thinking what a game changer for this guy for that and seeing you and seeing something. And I was like, oh, that's huge. And I love that movie. What the show's probably going to crush. And it did. And then I remember finding out because I remember not getting this. I remember like walking even with the girl from who I read with chemistry read with to the parking lot and her like we were us just you know vibing and I'm mean, like well it was really great like you know I hope you know if you you know you or so there's a few other people like you're definitely somebody I could see doing the show whatever I'm like oh cool you know I, yeah I don't fucking know and then walking out being like and Pete and I really jammed and I'm like I think I fucking and I don't think by the way you were there for any of the testing process so by the way dude the other two guys that were there against me one of them was a buddy comic of mine who can't act and um God bless him he just never took class whatever and he always is like is his name Jeff <laughs> I love him I love him to death phenomenal comic always is like I'm like dude you gotta take you gotta do you gotta Fig, try to figure it out doesn't goes off natural ability that'll that gets them as far as it'll get them um he hated my guts i'd never never even met the guy yeah and heard guts. through his girlfriend that he hated me <laughs> oh and i was like how, how can you hate me bro you don't we never even yeah that's met. i mean that's just like i know when you're that good looking you got to find things to get to get mad about um but uh <laughs> so uh, it's him and another kid and i'm like oh i got this like oh, i got God. this like i'm like fucking wow i'm gonna get to be in a show with ken jong and it's also like at that stage when you just you know get that close to an opportunity and enough things are being said you still try to keep things at bay and stay numb to like what could happen but i i just let myself go like oh time to buy a boat baby and uh <laughs> and then all of a sudden my agent calls me like Dude, it's not happening. And I go, but I bought a boat. And they're like, shouldn't have done that. And I was like, like, you don't even own a, don't even live near a dock. Why'd you do that? And I was like, <laughs> and then I was like, well, what happened? They're like, it's just not gonna happen. I go, dude, I crushed the fucking, I vibed with the girl and Pete loved me. I think Suzanne Daniels winked at me. Like, what the fuck happened? They're like, they gave it to, uh, to somebody else. I go, who? And then I just was so hard pressed. I'm like, who the fuck got this job? And they said your name and I go, the school of rock guy <laughs> and i go he just got a show i go oh man i was livid i was like how many shows does he fucking need and then dude, i love this story so oh, much yeah. I'm sorry i'm laughing dude. oh no it's great dude come on and then uh it uh and then and then it's one of those things where and this has happened to me with other buddies man my buddy beck bennett beat me out for launch pad for ducktales and it's one of those things where you go you get you let your genuine um, emotions fucking play play out and come to the surface, and then when you take a step back, you go, "Can't be mad about it, dude." Like, you know, uh, you know, knowing you and and what you do up to that point, man, and I can confidently say that that I I feel, you know, uh, thankful that I was in a space to be able to go, "Ugh, fucking." He's funny as shit. All right, what do you do? You know what I'm saying? I think those uh, times when those things happen and you go, this guy's not even a comedy guy. You know what I'm saying? Where there's things where you might miss out on and it, they give it to the guy because 
let's say you didn't do comedy at all, but they were like, dude, we love his hair. This guy. <laughs> and we Which foresee. Which wouldn't be surprising. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, the look part is a part of it, but like you're also, I knew, I knew I'd seen enough of you to go. And so I feel, uh, again, fortunate that I had seen enough of you to go, all right, dude, like you can't, fun, they, you know, funny is also getting, um, getting picked here. So, um, but man, I was livid. And <laughs> the fact that you got two shows and he didn't even test, I was like, he came, I was like, did they go to the bullpen for this guy? How the fuck was he even on the radar? And they're like, it just, you know, hey man, maybe. And, and now I want to see. I want to see if I did have any kind of a test for that. No, dude. I think you just got it, baby. <coughs> just well, classic Calvino so style. I, it was a kind of longer story. I mean, just there was because Annie, my wife, yeah. had a show in development with him the season before with Ken. And he was no with Pete. Oh, dope, <clears throat> Seagull. And then I had been buddies with Brett Carducci, yep. who was Ken's manager. Yeah. Who was an EP on the show. Yep. And so I had been talking to them already about this part and then got School of Rock. And they were like, there's no way you could do both. Wow. Then they figured it out. And then they ended up figuring it out. And I remembered that being like, this is an embarrassment of riches. <laughs> this is dumb. Oh, but also, yeah, but also you're you, but you, But you know how it is too, dude. Like once you get a little juice on something, yeah. people are like, oh yeah, yeah, let's uh, see I want a sip of that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it's, yeah, I mean, juice. it was so funny that like all that happened. I mean. Now, did you ever I think mean, to write uh, um, thank you cards to the people that tested for just kind of, you know, buying time so that you could figure it out? <laughs> did you not get it in the mail? Didn't, you it's didn't not so it? good. I moved a I, lot. I remember I sent it. I yeah, sent yeah. it and it was like, and it was, um, it was the, it was the cat. It was a cat, but he wasn't hanging on the tree. I know. He, I know. The cat was standing there and he had a. Look, I a heard, first, <laughs> I heard what the on, card was. Oh hold God. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The cat was standing on the trophy stand on the trophy thing. So there's like the second place and the third place, like the Olympic podium. <laughs> And the cat's got a, a first a first place medal on, and then there's empty spots going. <laughs> you, <laughs> you did great, and then you did you did uh, you did second great, and then I wrote inside. I said, "Hey man, good great job, sorry." <laughs> great job, sorry. Oh, worst card ever. <laughs> oh God. I can't oh. believe you didn't get it. Yeah, that's that's all good, man. You know, we're here now. But then you got fucking Mad TV. That was cool. And then that came and went. Shout out to the CW for fucking that up. Um, but uh, I was in the CW family for a minute. <sighs> Dude, I'm sure other parts of the family are great. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, hey, man, it's like we sat at the wrong side of the table, I guess. What, what, um, so I have so many questions about, because I did not know that you had a military background. Well, military college, but yeah. Okay. So that's, yeah. yeah, that's, you could say, what, what does that mean exactly? And why did you go there? So um, I went to the Virginia Military Institute for college for my yeah. four year college experience. Um, I mean, kind of a long and the short, like I've always craved structure. Like I was, I did martial arts when I was little. Yeah, I did Eagle Scout. I was Eagle Scout, you know, all that stuff. And so I think there was a part of me that dug that. And then I was a fat kid. And so I kind of always, Dude. yeah. Yeah. You know let's, what I mean? Let's, let's jam on that. We're always trying to make people laugh or trying to be like, uh, like prove ourselves. You yeah. know what I mean? So like. Well, to also for me, and I've said this many times, I was trying to get the fat kid label off me and get the funny kid label on me. And the more I made people laugh, the more they were like, dude, it didn't even matter. No fat jokes were coming my way, A, because I think they know that I would come back at them. But B, it was like, it wasn't, they didn't even see size because they just saw comedy. Exactly. Yeah. And so like, I was doing that all the way up until high school. And then my brother was a senior when I was a freshman in high school and he almost went to the Naval Academy and decided against it ended up going to a, a, a little private school in Virginia and we were very similar and he got into a frat and then it ended up not working out at that university. Right. And so that was kind of in the back of my mind. 
And then my parents didn't really have any money to send me anywhere. So I was going to have to go on scholarship somewhere. And then I always wanted to play division one lacrosse. And then uh, 9 11 happened my senior year in high school. Whoa. Yeah. So it was like a kind of a multitude of things, but they kind of all added up to it was like, and I had no idea what I wanted to do. Like, I knew secretly deep down, I think I wanted to perform and, and yeah. be an actor. But like when you grow up in Northern Virginia, I'm sure, where'd you grow up? Seattle. Yeah. So like yeah. maybe you knew an actor. I didn't know any actors. I didn't know anyone that grew up in a small town. And Just the kids that he plays with, you know? An actor. You so know? Not, not, not anybody tied to the business. Yeah. Yeah. Like, so for me, like, I mean, I just did in school theater classes. Yeah. But it was like, you know, the theater kids and the stoners. You know, and that, and I just didn't really make that connection. My theater teacher in high school was always like, just do one play, please just do one play. You know what I mean? And then we did like a senior in high school, like um, on camera project where we had to like make a short and I acted in one of them and it was, you know, like one, the, the funniest one or whatever. Oh, whoa. And, you know, but, but for me, I was just like, well, that's not a real career. So I ended up going to VMI. And um, anybody that's watching this, just Google VMI rat line and uh, <laughs> you'll see kind of what it's like, man. I mean, just to give you a little glimpse. So you go, you show up, they shave your head, you do hell week where you sleep for like two hours a night. You can't say me, my, or I, it's all this rat needs to use the restroom, sir. This rat has to go to class, you know, and that's your whole first that's, we broke out of the rat line where you're no longer called a rat. And then I'll show you, dude. So um, when you're in the rat line, legit, you walk into barracks and on, on the wall, on the floor next to the wall is a duct tape line. And that's the actual rat line. And you have to walk with your chin tucked in and your shoulders back. It's called straining. And you have to walk at a fast pace. So like walk, run along this line against a wall like this. And at any point, any upperclassman can say, hey, rat, stop. Who's the president of the first class? <laughs> and you have to know. Oh, this rat doesn't know, sir. And then it's push. Push until you, you have your next class or until the next formation. You Holy can do, shit. Do, yeah, you know, burpees or push-ups or pull-ups. It sounds like, like I was in the fraternity at USC. It sounds very fraternity. I mean, it's you're the 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 hazing meets trying to like instill some sort of like you know uh forced respect but like i, I don't know it's just uh, it's but breaking the, you down really yeah i mean but yeah. the thing is at vmi so it is just a big frat dude it's a big frat of guys but the thing is that once you get out of the rat line you think everything's going to be great so once you're like no longer a rat and the upperclassmen can't mess with you that's like when it can get worse, dude, because then the actual adults that are running the school are officers and like they inspect your room every day. So like you can't just like all of a sudden like, oh, I'm no longer getting picked on by the upperclassmen. It's now like you still got your bed every morning. You still have to have your shoes shine, your brass shine, like no drinking on camp, like everything, you know, it, it's Fuck. still like that hardcore, you know, you don't get to do the fun the, the any of the, the fun stuff but were you were you so fucked up prior to the like why did you crave structure so much from the you know eagle scouts and then into um the military i, I guess well? i don't know dude i mean it's always been a part of my thing like i just like to be i like to have my path carved out like i like to know okay you know the great thing about vmi was hey if i get good grades if i shine my shoes if i clean my room I get what are called academic days, like literally free passes where, you know, if I got over a 3.0, boom, I got one academic day uh, a semester. If I did it again, I got two a semester. If I got over a 3.5, I got four a semester. Right. And it was like, all right, great. I get my freedom. I get to float through here like a ghost if I stick to the rules, you know? And I kind of like that, you know, hey, your shoes are signed, fucking fix it. Oh, great. You fixed it. Now we're cool. You know, in a, in an, that was the big wake up call for me when I moved to LA right. where it was like, Oh my God, we love you for Ken Jong. You're perfect. You know what? We're going to go with the other guy. <laughs> like, Oh my God. I couldn't, I did not know how to function with that passive aggression backstabbing. Like 
I didn't deal with that a lot wow. at, at VMI, luckily. Wow. Like we knew who the guys were to stay away from. And, you know, if you stayed in line and did your shit, you were okay. You know, you got the check mark off your net, you know? Uh, did you know um, from, uh, from an early age that, like, who were your comedy, who made you laugh? Who were, like, the influences? Did you have someone, I feel like a lot of comics um, and, uh, and, and people that, you know, do funny professionally always had someone that made them laugh, right? Whether it was like a best friend that you were like, man, if I didn't have this guy to yes and what I did and kind of throw it back and kind of help feed the beast, right? Like for me, that was Adam French, Chris DeLeon, Jonathan Stevens, you know, guys that you kind of go, yeah. oh, cool, you make me laugh a lot too. And we all kind of have similar sensibilities, but you're helping me flex that muscle. And you just decided to not do it professionally because you're, you know, I guess a little bit more normal, but, but who are those people for you? For me, I mean, uh, like as far as heroes go, like Farley was number one. The guy, yeah. Yeah, you know, and then when Jim Carrey came on the scene, he became, you know, close Wasn't that crazy? Two. Don't you feel and so fortunate to have been alive when he, I love that you said came on the scene because it's like, I know he was brewing while we were, you know, before we were born, but but yeah. to be there when it hit, like I feel very, that I feel, it's almost like getting to see, you know, the great athletes like play during their primes, you know? Um, yeah, dude. And I mean, you know, I mean, same with Mike Myers, dude. Fucking Wayne's no. World, Austin Powers. Unreal. Like that, that whole, like. Austin Powers oh. changed the fucking game, dude. That was crazy. Dude. So I married an ax murderer. Yeah. I mean, that guy was like next level before. I know. With uh, you and your wife have been married how long? Uh, August 1st, 2015. So. Love it. We're coming up, dude. I'm five fucking years, bro. And she's in the biz too, yeah? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Right. A performer. We met in the junior company at the Groundlings. We met in Sunday company at the Groundlings. Wow. That happens a lot. That's how Ben and um, Falcon and Melissa McCarthy met. That's, yep. is that is that kind of ripe for, for love when you're in that cl close proximity and <laughs> yeah, creating? Dude. Mikey Day and Paula Christensen met wow. there. Uh, yeah, lots of people meet there, dude. Um, yeah, it's totally ripe. I mean, you're there in such close quarters creating with, with people and like with her, it was like right away, dude. Like she was super funny, yeah, super funny, super beautiful. And then like, I remember, you know, she's a, a writer uh, and that's kind of how she got her start. And uh, I remember she was like, do you want to read one of my scripts? And I was like, yeah. She like sent it to me. And I remember like being like, it's 105 pages. She's like, yeah, it's a feature <laughs> film. It's a movie we script. <laughs> Yeah, I know. And I was like, you wrote 105 pages. <laughs> I don't know if you and know what was, that is. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. I was like, oh my God. And it was so funny. And I was like, oh my God, she's fucking genius too, on top of it. You know? So you're like, I got to marry this girl so I can be in this. I got to marry her. Yeah. <laughs> got to. Wait, do you remember? Was there one line she said in the show or like, did it click? I know how you just said like it happened like that as far as like falling in love, but. Was there a moment during a, a show or an improv where like something happened and it was like, you said the same word at the same time or just something that she said that made you laugh? I mean, maybe, maybe it was even off, um, you know, I know you guys hang a lot post-show, so it might've been then where you were just like, I got it. Was, I, I mean, it was sure. very specific, dude. So like, I was hanging out in the, front, in the front lobby of the theater and I'd never met her before, which was kind of weird because usually you cross paths with people doing yeah. this stuff. And I had been in Sunday Company already for six months. So I was always hanging out at the theater and she was like coming in to prep for her advanced show, her level show before she got in, her level four show before she got into the Sunday Company. And uh, I was in the lobby with a buddy and she walked by and kind of was like, hi, very shy, like quiet and walked by. Hi, how are you? And we were both like, great, good, go break a leg, you know? And she laughed and my buddy was like, looked at me and I was like, man, she's, she's so hot. You know, she's like a, a porcelain doll that I want to have sex with or something like that. It was <laughs> something romantic. <laughs> something very romantic. And then like, I saw her in the show and from that like sweet, she was like in a dress, looked yeah. like this porcelain doll, very shy. And then I see her in the show and she's playing like this middle-aged, lunch shift stripper trying to pick up a beer bottle with her cooter and like the bit is that she's like four feet above the beer bottle just going dude i get it dude i get it like just gyrating 
<laughs> four feet above the bottle with like Funyuns stuffed in her cleavage. And I was yeah. just like, oh my God. <laughs> oh, she's so <laughs> hot. <laughs> <laughs> and funny <laughs> she's the total package that's, she's got it all uh yeah. that's awesome dude was the groundlings uh on the radar when he moved to la was it like not at all dude no i didn't know it. shit man I, I had gone to that i'd gone to that military school and then being what are you um, talking about it sounds like a, a great place for comedy <laughs> right education perfect jump would they come down on you by the way if you made jokes or laugh how did you find your voice in that uh i was the Dude, the only guys, like my, literally my most supportive, bestest friends are like, were like my roommates at VMI because they knew what a fucking goofball I was. And they're like favorite story to tell about me ever. So I roomed with these two twins. And then before that, my other best friend, Rob Payne, I'd gone through every grade with him from kindergarten through senior year in college, except for two weird, wacky years in, bet in between. But my, my friends, the Trembles and, and the roommates, the twins, and they had come to lacrosse. We all played lacrosse together and um, they'd come to the lacrosse locker room. Like that was our safe haven. Like if we could sneak away to the lacrosse locker room so we could, yeah. wouldn't get picked on. And I had like the music blasting. I was solo in the locker room, came down to take a shower and I like heard some guys coming in. So I just started fucking like dancing <laughs> in the shower, totally naked. And so like... <laughs> Maybe I'd heard them come in. Maybe I was just dancing, but they were like, the first time we met Tony at VMI, we were just seeing like flashes of this nude body in the shower doing like cartwheels <laughs> and dance moves. Oh my God. And, uh, and so, yeah, I mean, those guys have been so supportive since day one. They came out here last year to Sullivan's to come visit. Wow. And, oh, so uh, lifelong bros, yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And, and, you know, but I mean, that's, you know, those guys, they, they knew, but I definitely, I definitely kept it under wraps. Like I wasn't like the, I didn't, you didn't want to be like popular there, dude. You know what I mean? I like played lacrosse, got good grades and tr like made jokes in my room, but like, you didn't want to be like the popular, Oh, he's the jokester. Cause then you show up, you know, you, you get a demerit. You get singled you out, right? Yeah, dude. And then it's like, tell me a joke now. Tell me a joke now, or you know, or you know, it's like uh, well, yeah, the worst possible like place to have a joke land, like with that, <laughs> yeah. Jesus, you know. Uh, um, so yeah. then, when you got to LA, again, you were just so just fish out of water, like yeah. Let me find. I was a, place. a janitor, dude. I worked as a janitor for six years. Nice. And then I was taking classes at Cal State LA. I was, I just got my BA in history from VMI, and I yeah. was like. First, I was looking for a master's program like theater history or something like that. And it was like, well, I'll be pursuing my master's degree while also get, you know, studying acting. And I couldn't find anything. So I was pursuing a second bachelor's at Cal State LA in theater arts and dance, which found out was like much more theater centric. And right. I had been doing extra work that first summer work I was at, that first summer I was out here. And I met somebody that was taking classes at the Groundlings and they were like, you should take classes at the Groundlings. And I was like, I don't have any idea what that is. And I remember like looking at the website and there was like Will Forte and Will Ferrell and Kristen Wiig and Whoa. Lois McCarthy and, yep. and being like, this is too big time for me. There's no way. And then I ended up uh, signing up for my first, like for the audition there to take classes and being yep. like, oh, thank God. Finally, the thing that I meant to do, because I didn't, oh, at really? that point, I was like, I hate LA. <laughs> like, all of it, like, it sucks. I was a shitty janitor. Uh, and I was like, all my friends from VMI are off, like, you know, either at, you know, in the military making good money or at law school or cops in Fairfax County. And I was just like, what did I do? Fuck. You know. LA can be so overwhelming. <clears throat> and if you don't have even knowing a few people once you get there helps to kind of like ease you into the you know the chaos yeah. that is greater la and and the but the business again like we talked about not having any ties to it it's like you had an aunt that was like you know i'm a big casting director let me introduce you to some people right away or let me t at least tell you where to go so you can kind of start to lay the groundwork and then when you're ready nothing. i'll i'll throw you a bone no, not, none of that nothing dude i mean and i did you know and I had just, I, you know, I had a fat head coming from VMI too. I think I was like, I just went through the hardest military school in the country. What's LA going to do to me? 
You know oh, what I mean? Oh, wow. All right. Well, that's kind and of, I think, dude, that you need that delusion though. You know what I'm saying? To even yeah. step foot in LA, you need to be like, I can't be phased by this shit. Exactly. And it was like another thing to be like, well, I can't give up on LA. If I got through VMI, I get, I, I'm in this thing. Wow. I'm in the spin cycle. So there's no turning back. But just like you said, getting my bearings, like understanding the industry at all. I mean, that took me, you know, it, I'm still, obviously we're still figuring it out, but I mean, that took me eight years, dude. I mean, so long. To, wow. I mean, I got, you know, when I tested for SNL in like 2011, I was like, this is it. This Whoa. is going to be the thing. This is it. And then when I didn't get that and I had like three horrific pilot seasons and like no work, I was like, I thought this was it, but maybe this isn't it, man. Maybe this isn't. It's only natural, dude, me. to let that, that doubt settle in. What did yeah. you do in your SNL test? And what would you do um, differently looking back? Or nothing differently. I yeah. loved it. I yeah. loved it. Again, like Farley's it's, my hero, man. But like, I'm a not, I'm not Farley, dude. I'm like a fratty, uh, long haired fucking, you know, goofball who shows up and does physical comedy. And people are like, that's well, funny, but where can he do the straight man? Can he, you know, where would he fit? You know right. what I mean? And, right. and so I showed up and I did, um, I did this lighting designer character that I had done who had, uh, he'd lost the use of his legs. So it was this like whole physical bit of me like walking lock legged and getting up on chairs to look at Lico's and <laughs> park hands and stuff. And then I did Jack Black. Um, yeah. What was your Nick, Jack Black? You know, it was Jack Black, Nick Nolte and um, one other one. And they were all at a Red Lobster having dinner together. So oh it was mainly my. just all of them talking about how bad they wanted cheesy biscuits from Red Lobster. <laughs> Please give me a taste of that. <laughs> no, no. Because I, I, I didn't like the whole impression thing, man. I'm like, well, that's uh, a really good bag. You yeah. know? And, and, then, um, and then the very last thing I did was kind of a combination of a bunch of Sunday sketches I had done. Cool. And uh, uh, I was an upper level uh, graduate student at Juilliard uh, auditioning for a movement class. Yes. And um, so I was doing all this, like I did ribbon dancing and then I did jump rope and then I was just going to do a contemporary dance, but I hadn't hydrated. So like I just kept having like these horrific cramps throughout the <laughs> movement routine. <laughs> oh, oh, so and, I, and I did, I did my high school football coach or my yeah. high school wrestling coach. And I had this, um, I had a fake pair of testicles that, that I, was, I was able to like rig up. So they fell out when I did a move. That's so And I had funny, no dude. awareness. That's well, it so happened funny. in high school. <laughs> yeah. There was this coach, man, who would just demonstrate a cradle. And every time he'd lean back to do the cradle, we'd have like a straight shot of his nutsack. <laughs> so I had this like whole bit where like the, the other wrestling students would be like, coach, you're nuts. A lot of people say I'm crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so dumb. So dumb. No, you're getting That's testy. You're getting real testy. Yeah, we all are. Times are tough. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, dude. Oh, God, that was a fun one to do. And that was called Coach's Nuts. And I, I did. I bought some pantyhose and I loaded them up with oh, Harley. Should have gotten and, it based yeah. on that alone. I know, dude. And then they fell out again when I was doing my dance. I remember they fell out when I did like yeah. my jump splits and I was like, yeah. oh God, my nuts. <laughs> <laughs> That's but amazing. Needless to say, I didn't get it, but I was just like, after that, I came back and I like tested for every pilot, or not tested for every pilot, auditioned for every pilot. And I was like, so, so bad, dude. I was so green and so terrible. I'd never taken any acting classes. All I had was like, the groundling stuff. And, yeah. and I mean, obviously over time that makes you a great actor, but like, man, I was so nervous in the room. It was like, give me, were you too big? Actor. Like, what were you, were you coming? Like, cause now like watching you on know, gemstones and even as Ozzy and dirt, which I want to talk about before we even get close to being done, but um, you're so, you're so grounded now. And you're, you're, you're what I think like, like I, what I always love about Will Ferrell, which is like, he can play these larger than life characters, but be so again, grounded and just where you're like oh cool this guy could be you know it's got some over the topness but like i buy that he's that it's a real person which is the best when you can pull that off so when did you kind of get that switch to where you were like okay Not cool until now. way later bro yeah. i did like one couple weeks ago all my stuff was like 
for the most part, man, all my stuff at the Groundlings was always super big. And I think it's gotta I mean, be, I wasn't, you know, yeah. But I mean, I wasn't always getting like, not, I wasn't always getting, not all, I mean, you know, there were a few one-offs here and there, but definitely when people came to see me at the Groundlings, they were like, this guy's physical comedy is, is fucking unmatched. You know, nobody does it like me. And it was like, you gave up the body, huh? Yeah, dude, probably too much too much is there, dude, a, there sketch? Was a sketch yeah tell me i could see it in your eyes dude you were like <sighs> this one time <laughs> I, got, I got it here two sketches two sketches yeah so there was this one sketch where uh, i played an, an aging stuntman who was trying to get his his old all of them were super old and he was trying to get them in a jackie chan movie so they, <laughs> like, <laughs> so he shows up to live That's audition brilliant. them and so like he's there for a live audition and my idea was like to jump through the window on the side of the stage and do a somersault on the stage. So dive through the window. Oh my God. And somersault. And there's like no room backstage. No. Do. And our director, we were rehearsing it. She was like, I feel like you need, I feel like you can't do this. Like it's dangerous. <laughs> it's not a great Something's idea. Something's telling me this is a bad idea. <laughs> this is a bad idea. People are like, telling me too. All right. <laughs> and so I just like didn't even listen to her and tried it and nailed it in the in the in the rehearsal nailed it love that and she was like all right all right and so my first first live performance of it I do it and I nail my thigh on the window and get stuck <laughs> like halfway out halfway in oh no but it made it so great, dude, because I was like this aging, awful stuntman oh, anyway. Okay. So I like Either played way. it off. Yeah. I played it off and I was like, let me do that shit again. <laughs> and went backstage and then nailed it on the second try. And, and then um, that one ran, um, that one ran for like four weeks. Uh, but that was like very physically challenging. And then I did this other one um, where you'll see a theme here where it's these two people in an office meeting and they're gearing up for a marathon or they've just run a marathon yes. and they're in the middle of a presentation and they keep having these cramps. So there's a big step on the back of the stage. And, um, and so like I'm cramping up and I say cramp and I take, I literally do like a straight legged fall from that top step face first on the stage. Now I'd done this before and catch myself with my hands. I've, I have these two one liter water bottles in my hands and it's not like registering me like I should have rehearsed with the one liter water bottles. So I do this thing and immediately the water bottles burst and slip. <laughs> Dude, I drenched like three middle, middle aged women in the front row, like the entire liter water <laughs> but i do it slip take the full impact on my chin i'm seeing stars i'm laughing so hard but i'm like my chin is 100 percent broken i'm laughing i'm now upside down with my legs straight up in the air oh my god the audience is that way so i'm laughing so hard luckily i only i had only bruised my chin and uh but that was for sure like the most ouch moment I've had on stage. Fuck, dude. Like full force to the chin. And those ladies were not laughing. <laughs> I got <laughs> they did not enjoy it. I gotta One be honest, moment. that is way more hardcore than I was anticipating you were gonna describe. Really? Oh yeah. Jumping through a fucking window and like breaking thinking thinking you broke your chin. How many yeah. people can say they've had that thought run through their head? What were you doing where you're like, I broke my chin. <laughs> doing what? <laughs> wow. Oh. That's gangster, dude. Um, so, uh, so good in dirt. So that well. movie is so good that I feel like I want, I'm, you know, from, I feel like gemstone school of rock dirt playing Ozzy, like all those parts. So, carry their own probably special value to you yeah. um, and probably different prep. And they're all so different. Um, tell me about dirt first, like just audition process. How quick, like 
you Motley Crue fan yourself, like was, did, how much research did you do? Did you talk to Ozzy? Was like, that whole experience just seems like it was fucking awesome. But like, I don't know if it was intense. Like, was there a lot of them chiming in? Um, so dude, like that was a TGOT audition to go on tape straight from my agent. And I was like, oh, this is cool. They're making that book. You know, I, I, I remember that was like one of the first books I had read. And I remembered that famous Ozzy scene. And, oh, wow. And I had I'd never done Ozzy as an impression. I mean, we all did Ozzy as an impression when the, the reality show was on. But yeah. I'd never done it. And like, I talked to Annie about it. And she was like, fucking go for it. Let's put you in a dress. Let's do the makeup. Let's have fun. Like, Whoa. Yeah. Dude, and, what and, a benefit of having an in house supporter like that that's also think like you know what i'm saying to go let's yeah. like here's what else you can do because i think so often you know you don't strike me as the type to not go for it obviously but like having an extra set of you know uh chiming in in your ears of like you could do that you could do that then it gets you excited exactly. to do it right exactly yeah and it was like so i we put all these things together and rehearsed the shit out of it and i watched a bunch of videos of of him in the in the mid 80s and i mean their big note was like we do not want the ozzy from the reality show right you know and the funny Aloof. kind of funny yeah but the funny kind of thing is man like even if you watch him in the 80s it was always that's just him dude like it wasn't he wasn't fucking drugged out i mean he's just i, I think it might be from that area it's like someone from fucking you know the hill country yeah is you know sounds a certain way and it, you know it's like you know not a redneck but you know what i mean like there yeah. is a there is a you know a hillbilly aspect i think to wherever he's from where it is pretty standard and so that was kind of my you know background research and i put the tape together and sent it in and was just like all right you know that was so much fun we'll see what happens and then when they were like hey there's a director session they want you to come in I had already had this New York trip booked with Annie and the in-laws and by the way, Annie and the in-laws <laughs> rivaled Benny and the jets back in the day. If you Dude. were looking to <laughs> find way better, <laughs> way better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, so you had to cancel. So I had to cancel and it was kind of rad because it kind of made them show their cards. They were like, would you do a Skype session from New York with the director? And then I was like, oh, shit. You know, I figured they, they were going to yeah. have a bunch of guys coming in. Yeah. And I was like, fuck it. And Annie was like, fuck it. And brought all the, the dress and the makeup and the fucking earrings and rings Whoa. and glasses and everything I wore for my self-tape out there. And I did this a Skype session with Jeff Tremaine and um, Julie. Uh, I'm going to forget her name, but all, all the producers. And it was so super fun. And, um, and uh, casting director, Barbara Fiorentino, who's amazing. And uh, I found out like two weeks later, I'd gotten it. Wow. Yeah. Fuck and yeah, dude. It, it was so funny, bro, because like, it was like, oh, Ozzy. And it's like, working on that movie was so great because Jeff, who's the director, had been working with the guys, you know, for a month, I feel like, leading up to that scene. I worked one day on that movie bro yeah and like in front of all the guys he was like we have all been looking forward to this day this is everyone's favorite scene in the movie whoa like, it was so crazy and then immediately Russia. i'm like tick, 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 tick. yeah yeah <laughs> yeah yeah and cool man like, anything else you can say to fucking minimize the, <laughs> the <laughs> and then like immediately i'm like dude these guys are all from fucking like australia welsh british and then Machine Gun Kelly was the only American guy there. And so I was like, oh, they're all going to think I'm a fucking hack. And then my accent's terrible. Oh, and I'm a piece of God. shit. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, my God. And, uh, and then it ended up being great, man. And they were super supportive. And I remember yeah. you and you and Rian gave me, like, one little uh, accent note. And they were actually asking me for accent notes. Wow. Uh, yeah, they were asking, oh, tour. They're like, say tour. Can you just say tour a bunch? Because for them, it's Tua, Tua you know, yeah. Tua, Tua. And so to make it Tua, Ua, Ua, just shorten it like that. Make wow. It the hardest time with that. Um, but it was so fun. But dude, that was the only day of work. School of Rock, that was in April of 2017. 
School of Rock had been canceled in November of 2016. That was my only day of work from November of 2016 uh, up until I got gemstones that shot in July of 2017. Wow. Yeah. Wow, what a crazy year and change. Yeah, yeah. What, School crazy. Rock went how many seasons? Three. Everybody probably wants eight, but three of any show is pretty killer, yeah? Yeah, man, it was great. It, it was so fun. The kids were so wonderful. It was such a great experience. I mean, obviously, at the time, I was like, why in the world would you ever have another Nickelodeon show go six seasons and not use an amazing property like School of Rock to go oh, yeah. six seasons, too? Like There was a fucking makes, musical, too? I mean, like, that's, that's like, such it a no-brainer. It makes no sense to me whatsoever, but... That's for another day. You played, um, you already played guitar, yeah? No, terrible. Oh, faked it oh, really well. Faked it, dude. I mean, we had like long, long musical sessions every Saturday where we'd have to lay down the lyrics and find out what the music was. But I mean, I got okay at power chords towards the end of it. But for yeah. me, like that on top of everything else was like exhausting. Meanwhile, the kids are like, hey, check out this new lick I did. And I'm like, oh. fuck off. <laughs> Damn it, Gabriel. Like, they're yeah. actual, yeah, because they're actual musicians, right? Oh, they're so good, dude. They're so good. And, like, their drummer had never played drums before. Now he's, like, amazing. The other guitarist had never played guitar before. And, like, he's, like, sick. Like, oh my God. full on guitar prodigy, you know? Um, did, uh, no instrument playing on gemstones, but was that um, maybe one of my favorite TV characters slowly becoming, I feel like the more, and I, I can't see, and obviously I think uh, Divine was telling me how uh, um, it was like HBO's for the first show, like biggest, the numbers were the biggest for uh, first show, first season or something. Can you something? I, I, I don't know. Yeah. To, whatever, uh, whatever it was, it was a smash hit and, um, and, and some big opening thing. But uh, I remember even just seeing the breakdown for it and then seeing who was attached. I was like, oh, yeah, whoever's in this is going <laughs> to fucking gonna be stupid. like, yeah, man. I mean, just Goodman alone. I mean, Adam would tell me these stories of Goodman and how, how, how pro he was and like how he was so consistent, but then like there was a shift. Cause I was like, anything you learn from a guy that is just that seasoned as an actor. And he, uh, he said like in the wides, you do sort of thing. But then when it got to close-ups, he would fucking turn it up a notch. And, and he, you know, I was like, did he have any like secret things that you were like, Oh, a guy like this. I didn't know that he still did vocal warmups of like, you know, good man, man, good, good man, man, good man, good. And he's like, not really, other than him just crushing all the time and being super pro. But were you, you know, once you got the, this job, what, um, what's the first thing that you kind of, like, is it just excited to work on a, you know, big HBO show? Like, are, are you, what's your prep? How does your prep change for something like this versus um, like School of Rock, for example? Different show, I, but I mean. I, I just, I don't know, bro. This whole thing is like, a miracle, dude. Like, I'm so, like, grateful for the whole, like, pro process. I mean, there were so many things that had to line up for me, you right. know? Yeah. Um, like, I had just gotten off of a big, huge, like, I'm a big, you know, Mr. Finn on School of Rock to, like, even get the opportunity to go in for this character and to take a swing with that kind of character choice I had made and, like, the whole thing, there was so much synchronicity. I mean, just the, the long and the short of it, like my wife was writing with her friend who auditioned to play Danny's wife. And that's how we first heard about the script. And that's, I gave, then told my agents and manager, please try to get me in for it. And Adam had already been attached because originally I was like, oh, it'd be great to go audition for the younger brother. Because right. I'm not right for the Satanist. He's like, I think he was older and heavier in the wow. original script. Just I know he was- Just to show you, by the way, that like, as much as they know, they don't know. And as much as you think you know, you don't know. Like, it's, parts can be won over. Yeah? I mean, definitely I, you're I an mean, example of that. Because the guy I tested against was exactly that. That guy. Wow. A hundred percent. Did you, um, for the role of Keith, did you, did you do what you did for um, uh, Ozzy and kind of 
deck out with some makeup and some of the whole 100%, look dude. As for the very first audition or, or just when first you got to audition, the audition i fucking wow. had a skin tight black mesh shirt cross earring you know the mullet tucked back sweaty you know just so insecure and gross and we we had kind of workshopped that together because annie read the script and she was like oh this guy's in love with this other guy like every time you're with him you got you should be so super nervous like and and we both kind of took took this character that i had done i did one sketch of the groundlings with a character like this and it didn't really work and then i had done uh, a couple youtube videos with my buddy josh mcdermott called the josh. So yeah funny. you know josh oh yeah so, so funny, funny. We shot these things back when we were in an improv group together called the Insecurity Guards. And that was <laughs> Dude, just the names of these sketches. Fuck, yeah. dude. SNL, yeah. swing and a miss. And um, that's that's kind of where that character Akeef came. And then I mean when it happened, dude, when I got that call, I mean, I just remember just like with School of Rocks, like crying with Annie, going, What the fuck? This yeah. is crazy. Got another one, tricked him again. Yeah, I mean, none of this shit makes any sense to me, man. I mean, it's just like we just, you know, because more and more for me, it's just like the more we can just find the joy and take a big swing. That's yeah, what's been working for me lately, you know. And Do you think I your just, Groundlings commitment uh, has definitely contributed to your commitment for auditions now? Because just hearing you from the get-go go full-on um, goth garb, like, that's – not everyone thinks that way to just make that choice and go, Oh, okay, cool. So let's just, let's take our best swing in the first at bat. And, um, and uh, I'm sure that all that groundling level commitment and with the wigs and the characters, it's not foreign to you to do it for something like this. Right. You feel like you have an advantage because of that. I dude, I cannot tell you enough. Like if you are going out for a part that calls for a specific look, if you can match that look, <laughs> bring something creative to that look into the room, it really can help those creative, you know, choice makers uh, make the choice, make it easier for them. The last thing you want to do is have some character be like, what does that guy, what would that guy look like with a mullet wig on? Yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah. That's what's yeah. like anytime I go in for like a cop, you know, like I tuck the hair back, I fucking do it. You know, I make it, I fake it as much as I possibly can. Anytime I put myself on tape or anything like that, like, again, that's worked out for me. Obviously, I don't want to be distracting or jokey. Right. But, you know, luckily for, you know, Ozzy and Keith and even Dewey, like all three of those are like caricatures of people. So it like really worked to go the extra distance with them you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah, man, that's, that is, uh, people don't, again, like just from being in this business, like it, it's so easy to just go, no, they, 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 they're the pros. They should be able to imagine me looking like this or having this, uh, you know, character set piece or whatnot, but it's, and it also is, you know, um, somewhat intimidating to walk into the room and maybe be the only one right that in the audition waiting room that looks like that and like you got to get past that of people looking at you like whoa really man and be like yeah dude and this is actually gonna probably set me apart so you kind of fucked up but like yeah. how many times how many times are you in waiting rooms where you did kind of commit like that where you were just like i'm fucking the only one so, and yeah so embarrassed right now and yeah. it's just <laughs> really yeah for We had a moment, dude. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love a good awkward silence, dude. And we both just let that stay and simmer. Dude, ride it out. Oh man. <laughs> oh, I uh, loved your podcast with Rick, by the way. That was so funny. Oh, thanks, man. With the oh, uh, he's a, a maniac. He's a the maniac. Last one he he oh, the one that we did where I was, uh, where he, we Facetimed in. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so great. So great, so high. Him and I just, I mean, it's bit city, dude. Like, from the oh. moment I met him, you know, we met at the HaHa -Ha doing stand-up, like, probably 10 years ago, and it was just, like, just, I would just, like, people would be around us, and if they, like, 
weren't keeping up i was like dude you got to get in the pit boat man you're like swimming behind us right now like you got to like get in or get out we'll throw your life preserver dude but fucking we're in the boat right now and you're fucking we're you know you're still on shore you know and get on there doggy his brain just is fucking uh, a rifle but it's also we just never we've had some serious chats and then very quickly those serious chats turn into a bit because one of us either you can't help find like see a bit and then just grab it and throw it into the conversation or <laughs> don't like being serious that long but yeah he's a he's a he's a fucking he's so funny dude um <laughs> did you uh have you been keeping in touch with people during this time or are you just kind of yeah totally dude yeah. i was texting with dewalt a couple of days ago i feel like i've reached out to rick a couple of times i told him i'd come to the podcast and he was like no i want to do it in person yeah so. i mean it is look i think it there's something you do i've done a um a good number of these zoom ones now and it's still great dude i mean it's yeah there's still a lot to be had from it so it's that's why but obviously we'll do a a, a sit down one too when we get uh back to whenever whenever that is i mean yeah you know, how long are you how long do you think you'll be there i think i'll be here uh probably another week at least there's no reason to be in LA like the I just bought uh, a condo in LA uh, in May and it's great because it's more space congrats and it's, dude yeah it's just cool to have you know it'd been a minute and 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 uh my apartment next to the laugh factory was great and loved it but I wanted more space I wanted a nice bathroom that I when people said hey can I go take a piss I didn't have to go oh yeah just let me give me a second to go yeah, just let me go into my wipe it down room. and make sure the towel let me just take the shirt towel that's been hanging over the shower out of there so that's cool but the out we had no outs you know in the middle of hollywood outside is like the street since parks are closed nowhere to go um it was getting cabin fever and that's why we went to az because we had just I was taking bike rides every day and the outside and it just and and things are still shut down but just didn't feel as uh claustrophobic, claustrophobic and yeah. up here it's um it's okay but it's just uh up here for some some fam stuff and so i'll probably be up here for another hot minute and then but i don't think i'm going back to la for unless you know something really pops up there's some things i'm trying to pitch right now that would that could be done during this time that would need to happen probably in la and and certain podcasts that that um have been discussed that uh to maybe do that i that are still operating in person which i'm very envious of that some people are just fucking rolling the dice and doing it and keeping the distance, but still doing in studio stuff. Um, but I don't know if that's, if I would fly back for that. I, you know, did yeah. the plane, I, you know, the plane was fine, wiped everything down, masked it. it was very few people on it. Um, but I don't know if I would uh, do it again if I don't have to. Yeah. If you don't absolutely have to. Now, let me ask you this. I saw some really cool like character stuff on your Instagram page mm. and that's for, a pilot you did and i met some oh yeah on it. oh i don't know uh carly craig tom lennon joel keckner bunches carly craig who'd you met met somebody who'd you meet uh oh funches oh yeah right yeah 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 i just about. posted some clips from it it's it's uh something that i shot and funded and, and put all together and and um shopping it around now and so uh um i think we got that looks a, so cool a, nice man. yeah it's cool i've all i mean Dude, you know, it's so funny. I took Groundlings classes for what I did two years of it. Maybe got to the intermediate. The, the next one was writing, I think. Right. Yep. So you got and the intermediate. I had Ted Michaels as my teacher for a couple. Oh, uh, so great. It was the best. And then, um, and then went to New York to live with a girl and do and start doing open mics and stand up and whatnot. She was a page at NBC, and no Groundlings out there which I preferred because of the character stuff. I loved yeah. that. Like there was a game one time when it was just contort your face in a weird way. And then Ted would say, stop. And then whatever your face was, you had to start you had to talking. make a character out of it. Yeah. Dude, to this day, one of my favorite games I've ever done. I was literally just like, Oh, this is shit is made for me, dude. Yeah. And um, I've always, which is why I never thought stand up was truly going to become something I, I locked in on because I love doing characters so much as uh, you see with all that prosthetic shit. It's just like, I don't know. I just, I, I love that. And so groundlings, I was like, Oh, I'm, I'm on this path. I'm in it to win it. Then went to New York with her for um, a year and change. No groundlings UCB. And I wanted to keep the train moving on improv and sketch. So I jumped into that and then went, and I got so far into that that when I went back to LA, I was like, well, let me just pick up with more UCB, you know? Yeah. Um, but 
you know, uh, but I definitely do like uh, wish and miss that I had gotten to stay on that path. And at least there's no guarantee of how far you get, but I was really into it, you know, and that's, yeah. that's half the battle is just being like committed to that, like working at Universal Studios, doing my fucking, uh, you know, interning the casting thing. And then having, that was my like shit that I was like, cool, I'm committed to this. And, yeah. and, um, and again, I like the, the collective, the camaraderie from the group. And once we got to that intermediate level, the people that were doing it as a goof or because they were like, you know, the guys at the office said I should take improv. Once they kind of got seated out, and you're like, oh, cool. Now it's people that really want to do this. Yeah, for real. yeah. Then it got legit. like, it yeah, is. you got yeah. more excited about it. Um, what do you, because uh, there's a lot of, lot of comedy people, a lot of aspiring, uh, you know, actors and comics that get into this. What would you uh, say as we wrap this up to anybody that you've, you've, you know, unknowingly shared a lot of insight and advice just through your experiences and tales. But is there something that you feel like you truly have gained that you've now with, this quarantine having more downtime to obviously like reflect and just think about all your, your shit and what you're excited to, to jump back into. Is there something that you truly feel like you gained that, uh, that you would tell someone if they hit you up, which I'm sure happens online or whatever to say, like, how do I get like, what's if I got to get over this hurdle or if it, you know, is there a timeline for how long it takes? Just what would you, what would you say to somebody like that? Well, I got school of rock like almost eight years to the day after moving out to LA. And that was like the first wow. time I was making actual, like I hadn't been like, I hadn't been like sustaining myself on commercial money or anything like that. I had always had to have multiple jobs. So eight years, I think is pretty standard actually for most people to become working actors. I mean, and I've heard Adam say this before, but like, I think number one on the list is be a nice person. Be someone fun to be around. Number two, um, get as focused as possible on what it is you're really passionate about doing. So like, I think, and I'm sorry, this is a little bit longer, but I think there oh. are like five real ways to make it. Either you know someone or have a family member that's willing to do you a favor. You can either, you can do it through social media, whether that be YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, whatever, you can get discovered there. An awesome theater company in LA or New York, um, improv or sketch comedy or stand up. Yep. So pick one of those avenues and get laser focused on it. And then number three, just never stop creating. Know how to write for yourself, know what your strong points are, like, just don't stop. You got to be persistent. Patience and persistence in our industry is like the only thing. Yeah. And that everybody goes through waves of like lots of work and absolutely no work. I dig that. Yeah. I dig that. Fuck, dude. I didn't think you'd have a fucking f five, five point uh... plan, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, bro. Let me show you my PowerPoint. <laughs> uh, well, we got, you know, I think we just did a. Oh. Loved did not think you were going to give me the PowerPoint uh, drop down sound effect. But by the way, love that you gave me the PowerPoint theme song because every PowerPoint presentation, if you're doing it right, comes yes. with a catchy theme. Yes. Just so Has people can be it. sitting there. It's like, guys, five steps on how to get those pecs into boobs. And you're like, I thought what? this was an AA meeting. Stay with me. Guys, Gary, hit the like. Tits into boobs. Tits into boobs. Tits into boobs. Pecs into tits. Tits into boobs. Tits into boobs. Those nipples look weird. Who cares? They're pecs. No, they're titties. They used to be pecs, but now they're titties. They used to be pecs. Ding, ding, ding. Ding, ding, ding. Sprinkle flower. You know? Guys, welcome to the seminar. <laughs> One guy's there just like, um, dude, that's so Steve, le Steve leans over and he's like, Jason, <laughs> this was the best idea you've ever had. Yeah. <laughs> and cut. We got it. <laughs> um, so funny, dude. Uh, well, thanks for making time, man. I'm glad we finally did this. We'll do it again live. I know, bro. I love these pods too because I could tell that you and I were going to be homies. We just needed a uh, we just needed a podcast hey, to really up the ante on the friendship, you know. 
Isn't it a podcast minute? <laughs> um, well, good luck with the workout class. Um, good luck with, uh, with the rest of your quarantine. And, uh, you know, you're, you're definitely – look, if they want to start shooting again sooner than later, you know, you're there. So it's like – Let's maybe, rock and roll. maybe this is where the writers start to like shift in like what the show is. Since you're there, we can shoot your stuff now. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Divine, you snooze, you lose, baby. <laughs> You've been written out as a, a weird like Keith storyline, just <laughs> super dark and like, oh, it's coming. Super like long pauses. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, yeah. Dark rooms with lots of pizza boxes and Give mellow yellows. Give it to me. Arcade games, <laughs> so cool. Oh yeah. Do those work? Yeah, they totally did. Oh, man. Yeah. Game over. <laughs> Dude, we got to end it on that. All right, Tom. Enjoy the rest of your uh, week, man. Thanks okay. for doing this. Lots of love to you and, and, Thanks, uh, uh, and your fam. Keep them, keep them safe, safe and healthy. Thanks, doggy.